introduce the podcast and all the people in it. Welcome to the Live Lounge Podcast. I am Chrissy, and we have Brian as well. Yeah! Yeah! We don't have a lot of uh, news going on this week. Amen. Show may or may not be a little short. We'll see what happens. We Uh, will. Only quick stories. No big big things coming out this week. I am so glad you changed it to quick stories instead of quickies. Yeah, I don't know what drove me to do that, but I did that. (laughs) Um, so... Let's jump right into it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Nintendo is going to start shifting some production of their Switches to Vietnam instead of China. So that's kind of interesting because China literally does everything. They do. China and Japan, I guess. Yeah, Japan makes the fun things that go on the things that China makes. Yeah, uh, that's what I was going to say is like video game related. Japan does a lot. Yeah, as far as actual electronics, China is the man. Made in China. Made in China. Where are you, where is uh where are iPhones made? I don't know. I was gonna ask where where my Google phone was made too, but I also don't know. So we won't even explore that. I mean, you could Google it. I think um, I might. Where are smartphones made? iPhones are oh. made in China. Oh, the, oh, yeah, the vast majority of the world's smartphones are made in Asia, but some are made in Germany. But it looks like the Face ID module for the iPhone X came from Texas, so... Oh, well, 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 representing our home country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but pretty much it's China. Like, <laughs> even this article says a short answer is China. Now, why <laughs> would Nintendo even start to shift? production of switches to vietnam well it's trying to diversify its production uh it's probably due to the proposed increase in tariffs which is gonna i don't know what it's at right now but i know it's going to 25 percent on electronics that are imported to the u.s from china yikes so i mean 25 percent is uh is a lot it's a very tangible price difference that would go to the consumer and um 40 percent of the nintendo switches are sold in the u.s so that's a big chunk of change there yeah um, yeah. Nintendo is the only one so far that is confirming that they're going to be shifting. But Sony and Microsoft seem to be considering it as well because they obviously are going to fall to the same tariffs. It's kind of all that story's got going for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of these stories you're going to think, oh, is that it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Speaking of Nintendo, though, uh, they also announced a new version of the base model Nintendo Switch, which <laughs> usually is just stupid. The Switch Witch. But, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not a Nintendo Switch Pro because they're still saying that's not a thing that's going to happen, which I'm not convinced. I think they're just saying it won't come out this year yeah. so that they can just put it off. But anyway, the they're going to just do upgrades basically to the insides of the Switch. It's going to look exactly the same. But um, the biggest thing is that the upgraded battery is going... Well, actually, I don't even think it's an upgraded battery. I thought that I had seen that it's the processor they're changing in it, but... Yeah, a more efficient processor. Yeah, it's a more efficient processor. So the battery is staying the same, but the processor is so efficient that it makes the battery life go up about two hours more, depending on like what you're using 
using it for. Um, so that's a pretty significant increase, especially if you're one of the people that only play it handheld. <laughs> so like the Nintendo Switch Lite, I've read 30 minutes to an hour extra, and that being a completely portable, you can't dock it or anything, that's not, <laughs> not a very good increase for that. Yeah, what if you got a long car ride from uh, Brownsburg, Indiana to Barberton, Ohio? That's not going to last you all the car ride. That's six I hours. Mean, I, f I feel like they did it wrong. Like they should have swapped it around. The battery life issue should have maybe been in the Switch light instead of <laughs> this. But I mean, I'm... I'm not Nintendo, so I mean... Yeah, I mean, it could last you from Brownsburg, Indiana to Ada, Ohio. But you're going to well, have to break out the Game Boy and two double A's if you want to get all the way to Barberton. I mean, there are adapters for <laughs> lighters true. to You can charge it. indeed have it on the charge. I think it, we're more talking about if you're in a place where you can't charge it. Yeah, that would be awful. What if you <laughs> run out of your, your electricity right there on the last boss battle of whatever game you're playing? That sucks. Sucks to be you, don't sucks it? Sucks to suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take the next one. Your GameStop has two new desperate moves to make in to make. What did I write there? To make it not go out of. No, that doesn't even make any sense. Oh, yeah, it to does. Make it not go. Let me let me read it. <laughs> wait the way wait a minute. In okay. my mind's let eye, me I read, read it. it. That I think you meant to say. It. GameStop yes. has two new desperate moves to make it not go out of business. Okay, I I hear that, and I raised you this. GameStop has two new desperate moves to make and not going out of business. Oh, it doesn't so make sense write in writing. Uh, it doesn't make sense the way I said it the first 800 times, but here we are. Now, what are those two moves? They're going to um, sell retro games at a fair price with entire stores dedicated to it. And Yeah, fair price. What is their fair price? Because I've seen what their yeah. fair price rate in a game is, and it's most definitely not. Yeah, also, like, I, I don't know wanna... why you wanted this story because you love the downfall of GameStop. It's an it well okay. I used to like GameStop a lot until I realized oh they're taking us on a, a for a ride. So somebody yeah. cracks open and farts on a new edition of Call of Duty and then they charge you five less dollars for it. <laughs> but I can get a new copy of Call of Duty for twenty percent off. That's forty seven ninety nine just through Amazon Prime or Best Buy Gamer Club, which to be fair doesn't exist anymore. But I'm grandfathered in for about another year. That's just it. And then do you want to go to GameStop and get like like an unboxed, non-original, highly used copy of Banjo Kazooie for like I don't know what they would charge, like forty dollars, or do you just want to say like I'm gonna hope everyone looks the other way and I'm gonna download a ROM of Banjo Kazooie and I'm gonna play it at 1080p? I don't know. I I think it's not gonna work. I'm not sure that there's a big enough market for people who are into those who don't already emulate it. Yeah, I I. Well, maybe you'll know a little bit about this. They're also going to host eSports uh, and they're going to dedicate stores to that as well. Once again, I don't know about that. I... Yeah. How does that bring them money? Well, that's just the thing. There, There's a lot of money in eSports, but it's shared between a very small amount of people. So GameStop thinking that they can break into that somehow, and maybe they do have the connection to do so. But, I mean, I imagine it more so like, the new Call of Duty came out. Go to your local GameStop and you can play in a faux tournament of it. I don't know. I don't know. That's just me. Yeah, I think they're grasping at straws, but I mean, you kind of have to when you're in their position at this point. You, you do. got nothing else. I mean, you still got shareholders somehow. Thank your lucky stars. You still got shareholders thinking like, no, they'll make it. They'll make it out. My GameStop will make it. They probably have friends at work there. <laughs> they, they, they each know <laughs> one person who bought a Switch. Unfortunately, that's not quite enough. <laughs> so this is kind of surprising. And I mean, I don't have information that any actual named game developers have applied for this, but <laughs> there's been more than 4,000 game developers that have applied to be Google Stadia partners since its announcement. That's so crazy. That's kind of 
shocking. Yeah. Um, I still am not sure that it's going to be successful, but I mean that that's increasing its chances a little bit. It's a lot going into it. All of the applications are currently being reviewed and curated by Google to ensure that they get the highest quality library at launch when they launch it in November. Wow. I didn't expect them to have like enough to be like, we're going to have to weed through them. <laughs> exactly. And you didn't think that there would be this amount of people trying to get in on it because you knew like, well, EA is going to try to get their finger in that pie, of course. Ubisoft. <sighs> is going to try to get in on that if they can make some money. But 4,000 game developers? EA is just money hungry. They'll, they'll stick their toe in yeah. any water that, that they find. Can it make money? Okay, sign us up. Do I have anything to lose since I steal money from innocent people all the time? Nope. Exactly. Let's, let's go. Andrew Wilson only made $22 million last year. We need to make him oh, another Lord. couple million. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's heaven, it, huh? That's it. <laughs> I don't know how he lives. I really don't. Yeah, 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 Must be yeah, yeah, sucking yeah, down yeah. ramen noodles every night on that salary. His blood pressure is going to be so high. I would know. Yeah, he's thinking like, I got to make a buck somewhere. Where's my, where's my... I got to make a buck to buy my ramen. Seriously, what am I going to do? You guys are putting me in the poorhouse over here. <laughs> buy more FIFA packs. Oh my God. <laughs> We're cynical about it, and I don't have an excuse for it. I'm just, I'm, you know, sometimes I'm angry at corporations and bitter. Well, sometimes he's just angry and bitter all the time. Don't let him fool you. 24-7, <laughs> I'm just an angry, angry man. <laughs> so moving on, because I, we once again, how epic game stores didn't get thrown in there this time, but EA did, I'm not sure. But <laughs> uh, there's still time, I'm sure, to get a uh, epic game store plug in here. <laughs> They've been so quiet this week. I just, I don't know how to work them in. Well, we just did. So. Oh, well, hey, that's that's true. <laughs> they really should pay us even though we're giving them negative publicity. They should pay us in... For our seven people that listen to this. They gotta give us the, <laughs> the season pass every season in Fortnite. Ooh, that would be good. Yeah, I'll take, we'll take that, Epic Games. In fact, stop writing the checks and just, you know, transfer the, the V dot into our account. Yeah, we don't even have to see the actual money. Or like right now, if you could give me that uh, mech teddy bear suit. <laughs> the $16. The $16 <laughs> backpack in like, oh my god. I forgot the name again. Oh my god, I kept wanting to call it Megatron and that's not it. <laughs> oh. Oh, the the uh, uh, the Megazord. Yes, and I keep wanting to call it either Megatron or Zordon, so I have the right words, <laughs> but they're not the right things. <laughs> they're all, they're different characters. So many things. Anyway, I want that, yes. but I don't want to pay sixteen dollars for it because I can't afford it. That so would be it an would irresponsible purchase. My way. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Oh. Amazon gave. Studios is partnering with Athlon Games to make a new Lord of the Rings MMO for PC and consoles. Okay. It's supposed to be set before the events of Lord of the Rings and it promises an original never before seen story with new locations, people, and creatures which means they're just making it up. Yeah, like there's okay. there's no source material for any yeah, of this stuff. Yeah, it's not canon. Yeah, how could you um, even say it was without J.R.R. Tolkien's blessing, I suppose. Yeah. We'll see. We don't have very much information on that yet. Yeah, like Amazon Game Studios was kind of a flop. If anyone remembers, they released their, oh shoot, what was it called? Their like forest engine or something like that. And they said, this is open source and everyone can use it. Come make games for us. And nobody really did. And the engine was kind of hard to use. So they didn't really get much. But Amazon has a lot of money so they can partner with a developer who I assume has experience in this realm and maybe they can publish something to finally return on that investment. Maybe. I don't know. A lot of it's just up in the air at this point. Yeah, we don't we don't have any other information other than they said we partnered with these guys and it's going to be Lord of the Rings. I look forward to seeing what you can do. Borderlands 3 is um, now going to include a ping system in the game based on the system created in Epic's Legends and later featured in Fort 
Fortnite, Epic Games, wink, wink. Oh, give me that. you're wink, right. Wink, wink. Um, yeah, Fortnite stole it from Apex Legends, and now Borderlands 3 yeah. is piggybacking off of that. Because that's, that's like when you, the stupid people like ping like a gun or band-aids, right? Like, yeah, yeah, and I had no yeah. idea what it was, and then it's I found like, out how to do it. What is that awful noise, and why is there a picture <laughs> of a gun? But yeah, anyway. like the random fourth <laughs> teammate keeps popping an image on my screen. I mean, it could be helpful, and I mean, it is helpful if the people use it right but like i never feel the need to use it because i've just been adjusted to saying like hey it's over here come find me yeah like we're always but, in a party so we just say like there's uh this thing it's on me yeah but i mean if you're not playing in a party like a lot of people don't i could see it being more helpful so i mean it could be good and borderland in the past have been like huge mad Apps, oh, so yeah. I could see it being very helpful. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. Well, let's see what's going on with Psychonauts 2. It looks like it's being delayed until 2020. Uh, Double Fine had this to say in their, I think it's called a fig page. And what a fig page is, is it's like a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter, but it's for like people with a lot of money to throw around. Anyway, this is what they had to say. We know it's always disappointing when you have to wait a bit longer but we also know that you are an amazing, supportive bunch who, just like us, want the game to be as good as possible, so we're hopeful you'll understand. That's it. That, that's it. <laughs> it's being delayed until yeah. 2020. They posted that along with some other stuff that I didn't feel need quoted, and uh, I didn't even know it was supposed to come out this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really? Really? Uh, um, yeah. Um, so Taiwanese developer Red Candle Games made a joke comparing the Chinese president. I don't know how to speak Chinese, uh, so I don't know how Oh, that's I pronounced. heard it pronounced Xi Jinping. Oh, that's a lot of uh, G noises. G, for a lot so of. So many different. Like, yeah, I'm not even sure what that is. Like, Zh. I'm going to just spell it. It's X I. <laughs> And then it's J-I-N-P-I-N-G, but pronounce it as a Chinese person would. Yes. Um, however that is. Anyway, they um, made a joke comparing him to Winnie the Pooh in their horror game Devotion. And the game was pulled from Steam entirely after only a week. Uh, Winnie the Pooh is heavily censored in China. So much <laughs> that it removed any visual representation of the character from Kingdom Hearts 3 in the game. <laughs> Country. They're not allowed to re-release the game, and the company has been harmed irreparably as communicated in a statement. For the past four months, the art asset incident related to Devotion has caused immeasurable harm to Red Candle Games and our partner. Red Candle will not stop in our endeavor to prevent the damage from worsening. Like, what are you doing to these poor indie developers, China? Leave them alone. <laughs> um, I mean, I think this Chinese president needs to take a step back like you could be compared to way worse things than Winnie, yeah, the, Winnie Pooh. the Pooh is nice he's fun he's simple I'm not sure what why he's so offended but yeah I mean if you compared oh, yeah, me yeah, to yeah, Winnie I... the Pooh I'd be like yeah all right great that's that's the nicest thing anyone's ever called me <laughs> yeah, I mean the boy is short fat he's proud of that likes honey and he's always a hungry hungry poo and he's got tons of good close friends. He's got it all. Got a great life. Ay, ay, ay. People are so sensitive. So sensitive. Calm down, the people. <laughs> that is all we have for news, so we're just gonna jump right on and uh, on deck this week. Uh, I um, included lines such as new series, series on hold, etc. Good to know. <laughs> That's a little behind the curtain. Um, so Sunday, we start Kingdom Hearts 2. It's me and Brian, of course. Hooray! Um, it, we finally finished Kingdom Hearts 1. Yes. For uploading. So we're moving it to, and there is gonna be a lot of it, I am sure. There <laughs> is a ton, but we do more than one episode a week now. This started midway through my editing, uh, before 2019 had started. So we do, mm. we do more than one a week. Fair enough. 
Um, so we're also gonna have on Sunday Left for Dead 2 with me, Brian, and Josh. Yay! That's gonna be a fun time. It's always a fun time with that gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> and Monday, we're going to have some more Kingdom Hearts 2, and mm-hmm. then we'll have some Borderlands Game of the Year Enhanced Edition with me, Brian, and Andy. Bubba boom And then Tuesday, we're going to have Golf with Your Friends with me, Brian, and Andy. Nice. We'll also have a Give It a Shot. Uh, the game will be The Witness, which I have no idea what that is. But... It's like a 3D puzzle game. I didn't enjoy it. It's by the guy who made the video game Braid, another one I didn't particularly Spoiler enjoy. Spoiler alert, Spo- please. <laughs> Spo- <laughs> this developer made a game in 2009. <laughs> No, you said you didn't like it. Spoiler alert. I, I always like to give the people who listen to the podcast just a little, little hint of what's to come. That wasn't a hint. That was jump right into it. I don't like it. Okay, let me, <laughs> let me create a little bit of mystery around it. I start not liking it. And then something amazing happens and you'll have to watch to find out. Okay. Well, no, I I start by not liking it and then it grows on me just a little tiny bit, but I'll probably never play it again. Fair enough. Uh, We'll also have Broken Age, which that series will be on hold indefinitely. I'm just a Um, little bored of it. I'm a little, little bit bored of it. Eight parts. Uh, I do plan on finishing it at some point, but uh, not anytime soon. Fair enough. Uh, Wednesday, we have Sunset Overdrive and then more Borderlands Game of the Year Enhanced Edition. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Thursday is Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage and then Give It a Shot Sanctuary RPG. That's an interesting one. Y'all are going to have to watch that because I had no idea what to expect. (laughs) I don't either. (laughs) Uh, Friday, though, we have Titanfall 2 with me, Brian, and Josh. Yes. It may or may not be when we lost like four or five times on like the frontier mode or whatever it's called. I think it is more frontier defense, but it was our second round of it. So we had gotten into the groove. Well, that's good. Um, There is going to be something reviewed on the level and blog. We're not (laughs) sure yet what that will be, but uh, last week's review ended up being overcooked. That's a fun little game. That's a fun little game. You can go ahead and read the review over there. Sorry we didn't know, and sorry we don't know this week's. Ooh, I'm kind of excited about this next one. (gasps) We're going to start another new series, Until Dawn. Too scary. Uh... Yeah, that there are parts that that make me scream. Usually, I don't I don't know how much there was since I had played it before, but I think it is. It's it's a fun playthrough. I we're not experiencing it for the first time, so like we but know some of, of the things. stuff. I forgot. Yeah, we we kind of just have fun with it. So that'll be fun. That'll run for a while. Mm -hmm. And then we have more Borderlands Game of the Year Enhanced Edition because we have so gosh darn much of it. (laughs) Once again with me, Brian and Andy. And then Saturday, we have more Golf with Friends with me, Brian and Andy. And then there's also Portal 2 with Brian and Andy and another new (gasps) series. Life is Strange with me and Brian. I'm excited about that one too. And that one will be, that one will be entertaining, I think, because we hadn't ever played the game before. Right. So every reaction in it is genuine and every choice is not having any idea what's happening next. So (laughs) it's great. It was a whole lot of fun. That'll be good. Um, yeah, that's that's it for on deck for this week. And we don't have any general updates. So, Hooray! Um, Movie club. We saw. Woo! Pop, 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 pop. Pop, that's pop. Not gunshots. Oh. Pop, pop, pop. The popcorn for the Lion King, the new Lion King, because the animated Lion King has always been my favorite Disney animated movie since I was 
a wee baby. Whoa. Because I was two when it came out in the movie theater. And we saw a I lot of movies this year. It. I didn't see it in the movie theater, but I had to watch it like every night when I was like, when it was on VHS to go to sleep. So it's, it's a favorite. Um, what do you think of it, Brian? I, uh, uh, uh liked it most of the time. I did too. Um, I protected myself by saying it won't be as good as the original. So I went into it knowing that that was already going to be the case. And and I was right. It's not as good as the original. But, I mean, you're kind of limited when you're using animals compared to drawn cartoon animals. Because, mm-hmm. like, you can't sit a rhino on a hornbill bird. Like, you can't do that. Real life animal does that. Bird is dead. Yeah. Like, that's just an example. Like, so it has to be a little bit more realistic. As realistic as you can get with talking animals. Um, So it kind of took some of that Disney magic out of it. Because they, you just couldn't really do it with that. Um, Some of the characters that normally were a little funnier got a little watered down. But... Overall, I thought it was pretty good, and overall, I like the new casting for the most part. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is a spoiler, but I, I have to say it because it was the worst part of the whole movie. If you liked the Be Prepared song, which was a little as scary as it was in the cartoon, like, I'm, I mean, it could be scary for children. Uh, at least it was a little more fun and like you could sing with it. The <laughs> new one is, it's hard to even call it a song. Yeah, it's saying um, talking. It's barely even sing talking. It's more like a vicious chant. Like a slam poetry night. Kind of. Kind of. And it, it's not good. I hated it. Hated it. Um, But I can't say like I totally hated any other the movie. There are parts that I think could have been better. Yeah. But like I didn't like hate any other part of the movie except for that. There's a strong argument to be made for inserting uh, Keegan-Michael Key in every Disney movie to ever come out now. Uh, He wasn't used well here as one of the hyenas, and it was ultimately unnecessary to have that name attached to it. He he didn't get to shine. I don't think it was even just him. Like, the hyenas in general weren't used. Like, yeah, if and you wanted to stay true to the original, they weren't used correctly. They So, like, the two whose names they had changed for some dumb reason, which was already irritating going into it. Yeah. Um, I mean, they when they got to talk... They were funny, but like the main one, the one that they kept the name Shinzi, she wasn't at all. She was completely yeah. serious the whole time. There was and a like, like yeah. fabricated subplot with Shinzi that again was unnecessary. Like in the in the animated one, Shinzi wasn't like the top hyena or anything. She seems to be like the hyena leader sudden and like yeah um so instead of like three fun loving hyenas like from the animated series they're all a little more serious and you never just see the three there's always like these random hyenas in the background with them that just don't talk they could have they could have done better on stuff like that one Timon time and Pumbaa were great though. oh I love Timon and Pumbaa I was just gonna say one time I saw a hyena at the Indianapolis Zoo yeah yeah they do have them at the zoo so <laughs> there was that I also saw some lions as, uh, as well yes yep those are typically zoo animals very in very interesting trip for for a young Brian <laughs> My parents never bought me the zoo key. I wanted it so badly, but uh, never had the pleasure. Did they have zoo keys anywhere else, or was that just Indianapolis? I don't know what you're talking about. You would go up to an exhibit. You would press a button that was on a box, 
and the box would say like what's a hyena's favorite meal and then the jingle would start and then the jingle said to find out you need a zuki like the one shown on the box and then oh, if you put your no. your zuki in you would get to know the fun fact you yeah, know that was i've never been to a zoo where that thing <sighs> Okay. <laughs> I've heard you sing that song before, and I thought you made it up. No, it, I just, I wanted to know the fun facts, but my parents said, no, yeah, yeah. they didn't really say that. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there was a good reason for not getting a zoo key, but darn it all, I wanted one. Well, maybe they were too that? expensive. But anyway, anyway, Pumba were great. <laughs> um, Donald Glover was good. Can you feel I've my love? Thought- Roderick was a whiny adult Simba, and <clears throat> Donald Glover did it better, I would say. But yeah, more he, he, uh, Matthew Broderick, like you said, played the the whiny aspect of the personality, whereas Donald Glover successfully communicated uh, complicated emotion. That's probably a good way. Not just like I can't do it, Rafiki. I just can't. <laughs> Rafiki was also underutilized with yeah. his comedic value. He was too serial. Well, and he tried to be silly. And spoiler alert: there is no squash banana song. It was a fine movie. It was I okay. Wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was great, but it was good. I liked it. I will probably see it again. Um, I don't tend to see movies more than once, so we'll see. You'll see it again. Your mom already said I have to see it with her, so... They were doing a uh, lovely Studio Ghibli event this year at the local theater, but uh, I'd, I'd seen most of them already. I don't know what that means. It's an animation studio. They make, like, uh, Spirited Away and Kiki's Delivery Service and My Neighbor Tortoro. Uh... Howl's Moving <laughs> Castle... I don't know any of those. I've never seen the poster. <laughs> yeah, the poster. And all yeah. those fun little things. I remember when I had a Goofy movie on VHS. And one of the previews on there was Kiki's <gasps> Delivery Service. One, two, three, go. Uh, okay. You I see, have it's to hard. say go and be able to... Okay, so right. it's, it's on go, but on go means a beat after go. Well, yeah, because I have to say go. Okay. One, two, three, go. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.